Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the Cochlear Southeast Asia's first live chat session. So my name is Renato and I'll be your host for tonight's session. The series of this live chat actually came about as, you know, we want to raise more awareness about hearing health and we wanted to help people who are looking for hearing loss solutions um, so, you know, to find the information that's uh, appropriate for them. Okay. Our cochlear recipients also tell us that sometimes you know, it would have been helpful if we managed to speak to another recipient before we embark on our uh, cochlear implant journey. So by doing this live chat session, we actually hope to meet our objectives and be able to reach more people. Please note that we will be recording this session and then once the recording is available, we will be posting it on our uh, Cochlear Southeast Asia Facebook page uh, with closed captions. So do like our Facebook page if you haven't done so. We also encourage this to be an interactive session, so we encourage you all to post uh, questions or comments on the Facebook um, comment section. Please be reminded also that we will have a lucky draw at the end of the session. So we are giving away uh, Bluetooth speakers uh, to one lucky winner, okay? And to join this lucky draw, you only need to do two things. One is to register via the link you have, uh, you can see on the screen. And second is to share, to post, or to do comments on the comment section um, to make this uh, session very interactive, okay? So at the end of the session, we will be announcing one winner. So stay tuned for that. Now let's get started. I'm very excited to introduce two of our guests. So we have Vanessa and we have Rachel. Hi. Okay. So Vanessa is 23 years old and she's had hearing loss since she was two years old. Okay. She's been wearing hearing aids since and it's only until one and a half years ago that she went for a cochlear implant. She's currently a second year student uh, in Nanyang Technological University, taking up uh, biological sciences. Okay? During her free time, she's out and about with her camera, taking award-winning shots, which you should be able to see right now. So yeah, I admire her photos. It's really an impressive you know, um, you. portfolio that you have. You really have a great eye for you know, the littlest of things. Today, she is joined by her favorite sister, Rachel. Okay. <laughs> she also went to NTU and also majored in biological sciences. So it looks like we have a family of uh, biologists here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us. Okay. Now, if you remember when we were preparing for the session, we asked you to prepare questions yes. to ask each other. Okay. So we actually have prepared them right here. Here you go. Thank you. And then, here you go, Vanessa. Yeah. So with that, we actually want to pass the spotlight on you both, and you can fire away. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll start. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Okay, so my first question for you is, can you describe what being deaf feels like growing up? Okay, so um, to describe what it's like to be deaf, let me share with you one very good example. So let's say, imagine you're a driver and you're sitting in a car on a rainy day and there's a heavy downpour and you will see that the uh, windscreen is you know, very blurred, you see all the water droplets. You can't figure out what lies ahead on the road. You can see the traffic lights, you know the traffic light is red, you know that it's yellow, you know it's green, but you can't figure out whether how far the lights are from the car. So it's like you know you, you are, well, you're aware of what's happening outside the car but you don't know exactly what's happening. So this experience is pretty much um, similar in the case of the cochlear implant. Um, when I was, uh, uh, as I grew up as a deaf person, it's something similar to the example I've mentioned. Um, I'm aware of the sounds around me. I know that there are people chatting. Um, but I don't know exactly what is what they are talking about, so it's not a very clear idea, not a very clear picture. And uh, because um, 
uh, me myself as a deaf person, I feel that I have faced many challenges as well. Um, sometimes I have to worry about having to integrate myself with the hearing society, and uh, I feel that uh, what if the people may not be able to accept me for who I am? You know, not being able to make friends. Yeah. So yeah, I sometimes worry about how you have yeah. to fit into uh, yes. you know, a social setting, your mm -hmm. friends, yeah, yeah. your peers and everything. Yeah. Yes. I understand your concern. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> yeah. Even, even our mom also. <laughs> she kept commenting, saying like, she's worried that I couldn't make friends in school, yeah. worried that I cannot fit myself into the world, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, that's how it is like when I was, uh, um, as I grew up, so yeah. as okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, my next question for you is when you wore hearing aids, right, um, what can you hear? Hmm, I think I would say, uh, like I've already mentioned in the first uh, question, uh, just uh, general sounds like people chatting, all those, um, you know, you hear, you hear the sounds but you don't exactly hear what they are like, they are not um, clear, you know, you know that they are the sounds but you, you don't know what other sounds are exactly, so uh, it's very much like a very, uh, it's just not a clear picture, so yeah, that's what it's, the hearing aids is like, so yeah. Okay, <laughs> Okay, then uh, uh, I'm always very curious, like, yeah. do you f ever feel different from our brother, Austin, uh, and yeah, actually, from myself? Yes, yeah. of course. Uh, I, th I think I would say uh, hearing loss somehow feels like a blessing in disguise, you know, because um, among us siblings, like our parents always meet you and my yeah. brother, yeah, run yeah, all yeah. Those, do all those things like going shopping, uh, had to um, do all this bank stuff and asking you to do this and that. Yeah, but they, they, they didn't even bother to ask oh, yeah, you to do all this. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I guess it's not so bad after yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I guess that's the only difference I feel. So yeah. That's the bright side of uh, yeah, the, the bright, bright side. side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So optimistic. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yep. I think it's your. Do you have any questions? Yeah, of course, sure. Yeah. Okay, so here goes. Uh, so the first question is: um, Did you ever feel unsure about how to support me as a sibling, mentally or physically? Mm, I think I actually never felt any major issues mm -hmm. with the, in that aspect. Like um, ah, uh, like you know. It has never been a major issue for me in general, so I think like, mm, yeah, I think it's because we more or less know what you need or what you want. Um, like you're able to communicate with us and tell us what you need, uh, in general. So, uh, of course, when you lost your hearing at the age of two, right? Yes. We um, I was only like five, <laughs> so I I think. I don't think I fully understood what was going on back mm -hmm. then. So like, I, I remember like you know you uh, you had hearing aids, yeah. Yes. So I, I didn't know what those were. <laughs> <laughs> then sense. you had this device. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Transmitter was it? Was it called transmitter? Yeah, yeah, chest. yeah, yeah. It was strapped to your chest. Yeah. Was it transmitter? I think it's more than Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See, I, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah I remember so seeing that. Yeah, 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 all the wires and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I remember when I was five. <laughs> I was like very confused. I was yes. very confused and very um, interested at the same time, very curious also. But but you know, I, I didn't know what's going on. Yeah. Okay, okay. So um, I mean, it's like yeah. Over time, we we learned uh, what you need also la. Like mm -hmm. uh, we slowly pick up you know the things that you need. Mm -hmm. and then uh, it gets easier over time. You know, especially now that you've got gotten your cochlear, you can tell us very easily what you need. Yes. Right. Yeah. Then um. And so, like maybe in the beginning when you uh, lost your hearing, then uh, when we started learning about what you need, right? Mm -hmm. I say I realized certain things. So, for example, like ah, okay, I noticed that you you were quite reliant on re uh, lip reading. Very much. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. So I was thinking like, um, oh, okay. So since you, you need that, I tried to shape the words yes, to yes. Uh, shape my mouth to the words. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes you feel like to face me. Yeah, so yeah. Make sure they look at Correct, yes, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then yeah, I make sure they look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, I make sure they're facing you before Correct, you correct. So like I had to yes. slow down also. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, honestly, it was a test of my patience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very <laughs> easy for, for us to be like, uh, like you know, just keep on repeating and then be like, oh, forget it. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. leave it up the conversation. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, but at some point in time, I, I realized that, you know, what if um, 
someone treated you this way mm-hmm. outside. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't it didn't feel good lah. So I was like, okay, not nice. I, as your as your family member, as your sister, you know, we should support you. We should help you as much as we can. Yeah, yeah. true. Like one very good example would be, you know, anytime we have a family gathering, mm, mm. They, our family and you know, relatives they very like to um you know have a chit chat. Yeah. You know. Sometimes I'm, I'm I can't catch what they are saying. Mm. You know. But at the very least, you know, whenever I ask you what's happening, you make the effort yeah. to let me know. Correct, you know yeah. Because usually the standard would be that, okay, wait, 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 you just keep quiet first and listen to what they say. I will okay. tell you later. Mm. But in fact, you're actually making the effort to listen first and then you explain mm. at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, of course, there's a kind of support yeah. I really enjoy. So, I'm yeah. glad you appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next question. Okay. So as kids, were there moments where you felt all the intention was on me? Uh, <laughs> back, I mean, at home, I think, okay, if you talk about um, with our parents, because mm-hmm. we have, there's three of us, right? I think they were quite fair. <laughs> I think they have been quite fair. Yeah, like, when you were naughty, they will still scold you. <laughs> yeah, true. So, yeah, like, um, but I've never felt, like, neglected in any ways, or like, like hey, why, why all the attention on you? Yeah, I never felt that way. I've never felt that way. So, um, I think it's uh, like okay. I understand that under in some cases, right, where you may need more attention or more help from others. So, like, let's say, like helping you uh, hear better, mm-hmm. okay, or helping you keep your. It's as simple as helping you keep your your device and everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I can understand like if if someone has to give you more attention mm-hmm. uh, in that kind of situation. Yeah, but. Uh, so, it's I've never felt the shift in attention. Okay, um, like it doesn't bother me. So, uh, it, in fact, it actually makes me feel good knowing that, you know, when you're outside, there are people giving you the attention that you need. So, like I understand that. I like, say in school, yes, you have your people who like reach out to you and say, "Hey, do you are you able to hear?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Effort, like, you need this device. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah, they can sense. ask you, they, they have note takers also, so right, they yeah, actually yeah, yeah. reach out to help you. So, yes, yes. I think the attention is actually good. Yes, like, for a good purpose. Uh, correct, yeah. yeah. So, right, right. I, I feel more at ease, you know, I don't worry so much. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know, okay. mom always say, like, hey, can you chat with your sister? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens, it happens. Yeah. But, yeah, shoot. Yeah, so I, I said, okay, it's okay, I don't worry. Like, I know there are people out there helping you. Yeah. yeah, so it's like you know them in good hands, yes, right? and yes. there are many nice people out there as well, mm. which I'm really th- very um, thankful for. Yes, so yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, your turn. My turn, okay. <laughs> so, my question for you here is uh, what is the difference uh, between hearing with uh, hearing aids, like last time, and then now with your cochlear? Is there any difference? Like, mm, there is definitely a difference. Uh, like what I've mentioned previously, when I read a hearing aids, it's like yes, I can hear everything, but not to an extent when I can hear all the very um, small little details like word by word of the speech or you know things like that. Um, and when I was fitted with the hearing aids, right, I actually thought that it's really good enough that I can hear everything. Mm. But the moment I switched to the cochlear implants, I realized that the more new things that I hear with the cochlear implant, the more I realise that I'm actually missing out on a lot of things with my hearing aids. So that, that's why it got me wondering, ah yeah, I should have switched to my cochlear implant earlier. <laughs> you know, because I'm missing out on so many things. Yeah. But basically, I think um, it's better late than never. Lah. So yeah. at least now I realise that, okay, I'm, I'm beginning to hear more new things. So the cochlear implant, I would say, is uh, better than the hearing aids in terms of the clarity, it gives you, it allows you to be able to hear more things, of course, depending on your needs. So, and the good thing about the cochlear implants that it offers, um, other than what the hearing aid can offer is, uh, like say for example, you know, you very like to listen to rock music. Yeah. You know, the rock music always have this heavy drumming, heavy guitar, everything. And I still don't understand why my sister loves to listen to rock music. <laughs> Because we always share our favorite songs and all the songs she recommended, I can't, I, I don't understand, I don't even know what they are singing when I was speaking to hearing aids. But now with the cochlear implants, I can, I think I'm listening to rock music 
pay off for now. So very good. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> good so yeah, I, I guess the cochlear implants is that it allows me to hear, listen to more, a uh, wider range of music, in which I'm very thankful for it lah. So. Yeah, that's the yeah. difference. Yeah, and I remember you can you suddenly said, hey, is that the birds chirping? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> so the, very, the very funny thing is uh, sometimes our parents forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because they, 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 were, they were like, I have to wait for you yeah, to look yeah, at me yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, okay, so okay. that's the funny very, thing. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. amazing, yeah. <laughs> okay, then my uh, the next question that I'm also quite curious about is, um, how well can you beat lips? According to, I, I can't say so for myself, but according to the audiologists and the therapists, they say that they can tell that I rely very heavily on lip reading. And uh, I would say myself, according to the test, I would say I'm an expert. <laughs> 23 years of experience. <laughs> because uh, I, I would say it's good because, you know, every time after some time when you're fitted with the cochlear implant, they will give you the test mm. to make sure mm. that your it's working for you. Uh. Yes. So there's this they have the different stages. They have one without lip reading mm. and then you will need to try to hear what they're saying. Yes. The other one is with lip reading and then you try to hear what they're saying. Mm. Sometimes even if without lip reading and then in a noisy environment and so on and so forth. And there's this stage when it involves um, lip reading in a noisy environment and it's got a hundred percent. So it's like I think it's a clear proof that um, yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then, you know, every time we go, like, we eat dinner, yes. eat lunch, whatever, then we just like, mouth the words. Yeah. We don't make any sounds. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we always like gossip, gossip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Our parents will be like, what are you two talking about? Huh? Yeah, yeah, nobody will know. <laughs> yeah. like, but there's a good thing about me reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In which I still don't understand because the audiologists and the therapists they kept saying, you shouldn't read, read too much, it's not good. But actually, it's a good thing because we can get the share secrets. Yeah, exactly, we nobody can will know. mouth the words. <laughs> yeah. Letting our parents know. So that's a good thing yes. about reading, I guess. Yep, yep. So many secrets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Then uh, another question I have is um, Is it true that living with hearing loss makes you tired? Mm, yes, very much so. Because uh, my ears are not like your hearing people. Your ears function somehow like they are like on standby mode 24-7, you know. Okay. Like any sound that naturally comes to you, you seem to be able to respond to the sounds. But for us, it's a bit delayed, you know. We need time to process. Just here. So like starting the car engine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let the engine warm up first. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Even even for us people with hearing loss, right? Um, we need to like prepare our ears. Like, okay, get ready to hear. Okay, mm -hmm. I know this person is talking and so on and so forth. So I would say it's very tiring, especially when you you are trying to uh, be make your ears on standby. Mm -hmm. It which is nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. But of course, we'll try to uh, be more aware of the surroundings as well. And um, sometimes in school, especially in school, I would say it's the most taxing on my years as well. Um, let's say for now, the very good example in this situation is the COVID-19. Uh, yeah. You know, nowadays all of the lectures, they are put online, right? Yes. yes. And it's very tiring for me. And there's this one lecture that lasted about three hours. Yeah. So the three hours lecture felt like 10 hour lecture. Mm -hmm. So I had to take breaks in between because it's very tiring for my years. So yeah. How it is. So especially in like a big group, you know, group setting, yes. you have to follow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Then if everyone's talking at the same time, then... Yeah, they have to show the room, yeah, which yeah. focus. True, well. true, true. Yeah. Okay, but for you, you're able to. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> not bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But now if you're cochlear, I think you can... Yeah, yeah. it's much easier. It's much easier, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's... Okay. Back to you. Okay, so the next question is, what were your thoughts when I said that I wanted to get a cochlear implant. Oh, I remember. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, <Is> that moment? <laughs> <laughs> but when, when we first found out that you needed cochlear, right, mm -hmm. uh, we were all very shocked. Yes. Like, um, uh, honestly speaking, like, to be very, very honest, I found it a bit hard to accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was quite um, difficult to... Yeah. Can you remember what you said like, when I first got in here? Yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, we were, we were driving, we were, we were at the uh where the driving center. Driving center, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. You were going to register for driving or something. Yes. Then, then uh, Sunish just said like you just said uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I was telling her. Like, why the emoji announcement sound very different? Yeah, I was like, ah, no, leh. Yeah, so what? Yeah. And she said, no, it's just normal. Yeah. Then I was like, okay. Yeah. Something's wrong. So she thought, like, you thought your, your hearing aids were um, yeah. low in battery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you changed, yes. but you still put it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like thinking, okay, maybe the battery was flat also, so yes, just yes. come back and change. Yes, but yes. then it turns out that you really couldn't hear anymore. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So when we went to the specialist, like, mm. um, the specialist said, oh, you have to use cochlear implants. Mm. So I was thinking, like, huh, is that, like, oh, so sad. Like, yeah, 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 <laughs> your yeah. hearing deteriorated and everything. Then I just thought, like, um, is there any any other methods? Like, are there more powerful hearing aids? Um, is there a, a less invasive method for your uh, to help with your hearing mm-hmm. So I was thinking like, like, is there like if there is, then then can we explore those options? But uh, but you know, then I just after after I gave it some thought like, you mm-hmm. were, I was thinking like if this is the if this is the best option and if this is what you really need, then go for it. Like, you know you know yourself best, you know what you need. Exactly. So since you're very sure, go for it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very supportive of it. <laughs> and, you know, the very funny thing as well, right? Before we thought about the cochlear implant, uh, yeah. like literally we didn't even think about it. Yeah, yeah. Our mom actually mentioned it, oh, yeah, just go for cochlear implant. Then yeah, we were like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She's fine, she's yeah, not yeah. the more powerful hearing aids and she's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it, it turns out it turned out okay, everything turned out okay after you got yes. your implant. So um yeah, it was a good decision, no regrets. Mm. Yeah, especially it was especially important because uh, you were starting uni. Like yes, then. yes, yes. Right. Yeah, it's very important for you to hear in class. Like, you know, mm. sometimes the prof when the prof talks, yeah. you can't hear even a normal hearing person cannot hear them sometimes. So, like, <laughs> the work yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's it's very tiring if you can't yes, hear. Yes, yeah. yes. So you will fall behind so yeah, yeah the essence can be very thick sometimes. yeah and and i i just think that it's not fair for me or for anyone to to take away for take away the opportunity for from you lah, to be able to hear yes yeah especially when university nowadays they are very um um inclined towards you know digital learning you know, yes everything is very yeah, digital yeah learning. a lot of those so yeah. that means i really need my ears mm. support, so. mm. correct correct yeah, yeah. Okay, so this question. Okay. Okay, so um, did you notice any difference in me after the cochlear implant surgery? Uh, okay, in terms of how we live together, lifestyle wise, still the same. Okay. You still annoy me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that doesn't change. <laughs> um, but I noticed that you are actually more comfortable. Okay. You are more confident and you're happier, lah. Definitely happier. Happier. Yeah. Very obvious. Very obvious. Yes. yes. <laughs> you can't hide that. <laughs> yes. So um uh so like for example, you know remember when you just got your cochlear implants? Uh, we forgot that you actually can hear us. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were just. And that's one of the reason why there were regrets getting the cochlear implants. <laughs> yeah. Why? <Right? Like>, we <laughs> we always talk about you. Yes. And then. Like we just forget that you can hear. Yeah, like, oh. and then I'll be like, "Did you realize that I'm having the cochlear implant <laughs> yeah, in my head?" Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes, sometimes sometimes you cannot see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Covering it. Correct, correct. Yeah. So yeah. You just suddenly interrupt. Then like, eh. <laughs> oh yeah, oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very interesting now. It's yes. you are much livelier yes. and you speak up more, mm-hmm. which is a very nice change. Okay. So it's nice to be able to hear your opinions for a change. Because it's, it's always like you're being left out of the conversation. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, and then now in school, you've been making friends. Quite a few friends, yeah. A few friends. Yeah, I mean, slow, uh, slow and steady, slow and steady, yeah. But, <laughs> but I think, I think uh, it's good progress actually. You've yeah, been making yeah. a few friends here and there, so, yes, so it's, it's nice. Yes. So I, I feel that you are more confident and you're able to hear people, so you can give your inputs mm. more confidently. So yes, yes. It's, it's good. Uh. It's, it's and very the, nice. best, the best part about the the implants also is that um, you know last time I mean, I used to feel physically dentist oh yeah, 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 yeah especially polyclinics yes. I don't know why doctors love to wear masks oh, they have to I understand <laughs> now COVID-19 <laughs> wear the mask I understand <laughs> wow it's challenging like even for me they can't even remove the mask for me and that's why it's so hard but at least with the cochlear implants it's like okay la chill easy for me to hear so that's a major difference that's true, that's true. in my opinion right yeah, even I always complain yeah, yeah like, oh, I don't know what he's saying yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, 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 and yeah. I have to rely on you what you're saying, and you forgot what you're saying. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a good thing. Okay, okay, okay yeah. True. Okay, yeah. okay so it's uh, my turn? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, so what made you decide on getting a cochlear implant? Hmm. Actually, when my hearing um, wasn't over time, right, which happened um, one and a half years ago, uh, the cochlear implant wasn't my first um, go-to solution. Mm. Because I've been living with a pair of hearing aids. Yeah. I know that technology has advanced so greatly. Mm. There are more powerful hearing aids as well, even for the profound hearing loss. Mm. But um, in which, of course, I will take a step-by-step -step approach. I will try to tune my hearing aids first. Yeah. But in which it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, I tried um, cleaning my ears as well because they said that I was suffering from some bacterial infection. Or was it fungal? Yeah. Fungal infection yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Then also still. The hearing is still the same. In yeah, fact, yeah. it got worse and there was yeah. time letters as well. Yes. That's yeah, the yeah. burden. Uh. It yeah. made it worse. Yes. Hearing loss, never mind, but time letters, seriously. Yeah, yeah. So, so, even the most powerful hearing aids, the moment when I realised that the most powerful hearing aids is not helping me, mm. that is when I realised that the cochlear implant may be the solution for me. I know it, I can feel it, it's a gut feeling. Oh. And I have many friends as well. They, nowadays, a lot of them have, have been switching from hearing aids to cochlear yeah. implants. I can feel it. I know that this moment will happen someday mm. because my hearing just keep on declining, you know. Mm. So, yeah, that is what prompted me to get a cochlear implant. Yeah, like I said, like, you know yourself best, you know what you need best. Exactly. Yeah. And it was very good that you were able to tell us, like, yeah, 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 yeah. communicate with us. And the funny thing is, like, I was very sure that the cochlear implants may be the one for me. But not all people were for me, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. our relatives. Yeah, and, yeah. It's like, it's very hard to convince them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least now I know that I've never regretted. Uh, you, yeah, it's so, your choice, yes. <sighs> yeah. Okay, then, uh, like, linking to that question, so, do you have any fears before the surgery? Hmm, you're afraid of anything. Surgery-wise, no. Surprisingly, because, um, uh, before the cochlear implant surgery, I actually went for this one surgery, which is for my braces. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's it's a, quite a major yeah. operation in my opinion, yeah, because yeah. they have to remove how many? Uh, six tooth, six teeth. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they have to um, implant something at the palate. Oh yeah, the screw my gosh. or something. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> there was so yeah. much blood. I remember, <laughs> and it's a general anesthesia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So of course. Because precisely because I already know how surgery works mm. and even we are scientists also, we know how, how it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> we trust doctors, we trust them, yeah. we know they have the skills. So um, basically because of the dental surgery last time, mm. I already know how it works, like, oh, okay, I'm supposed to fast, I'm not supposed to do this and that, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So technically speaking, I'm not worried about the surgery. Besides, I really know that I'm in good hands and the doctors are very experienced as well. Rather, it is the whole surgery that I'm the most concerned about. Yes, yes, yes. Which makes sense. Yeah. Because it's something that you cannot achieve overnight. Mm. It can take um, up to months, and for some people, in uh, many years as well. That's why it, that's what I'm very worried about. Yes. Because we don't know whether it works for me. We don't know whether I would like the sound of the cochlear implant. And the most important thing is, will I be able to get used to the cochlear implant before school started? Yes. Yeah. Just months before yeah, school. Yeah. So yes. every day I'll be counting, okay, February is my surgery, March, April, May, <laughs> June, July, August, six months, okay, I must be able to hear within really these six yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I'm very stressed. Yes, you're very stressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. So of course, I'll be, it's the post surgery that I'm worried mm. about. A lot of work and a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of their case. Correct, right? correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially when you have to practice um, hearing with the cochlear implant. Yeah, it's true, true. true. Yeah. It's, it's very noisy, you know. Mm. Wow. At the in the beginning, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 True. Yeah, okay. Okay, then uh, I've always been very curious about this. Uh, as your as your tati, your older sister, <laughs> do you have any concerns about your future partner, future boyfriend? <laughs> Are you worried about anything? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you this. You know, nowadays I have a lot of friends, female friends, right, mm. with hearing loss. Generally, their boyfriends are the ones who can hear. Okay. So. From what I can see, I can infer that 
you know, girls with hearing loss, mm. they must find a boyfriend, a man who is stronger, you know, someone I can depend on, someone who is hearing, uh, you know. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not saying or I'm not saying it's wrong, but in my opinion, um, there are actually some, I have people telling me that they hope that a boyfriend will be hearing. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, which is, I totally understand, even me, myself, when I was young, I also thought, I can't hear. It would be nice if my boyfriend can hear, he will do all those things for me. Okay. Makes sense. But, if you think about it, right, if you can't, if I can't accept myself for who I am, what makes you think that a boyfriend can accept me? Oh, wow. Right, so <laughs> basically I need to accept myself for who I am first before they can accept me, right? It makes sense. So, that's why I realised that whether my boyfriend is hearing or not hearing, I'm fully open to it. So basically, just be nice, just be yourself, and hopefully it will be even nice that, you know, even you and my brother, you know, you all started learning sign language. A bit, a bit. A bit, yeah, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But still, it's, it's something really, because even though I hear the cochlear implants, yes, but there are situations like, say for example, when my hair is wet mm, mm. after bath, I can't, yeah. I can't possibly wear it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so of course, then you need to communicate with me, right? Mm, and mm. sometimes situations, you know, when yeah. you head out and I forgot the battery. Yes. Yeah, I was yeah, like, oh yeah. shit, I forgot, where's, my, where's my battery? I forgot, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't bring the spare one. So, yes. so that's why I, um, if I'm really very thankful when I see that you are making the effort to learn sign language. So, so as to make sure that you're able to communicate with me without the cochlear implant. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, naturally, while I'm getting the cochlear implant with the hope of being able to fit myself with uh, my boyfriend, my future boyfriend, it would be also nice as well if my boyfriend also made the effort to communicate with me as well, like you know. So that's what. So at least be patient with you. Yes, yeah. patient. Understanding. Like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then next time, if you when you find a boyfriend, yes, yeah. when you must show us, ah, yeah, come home and show us, okay. Yeah, sure. We show approve. my boyfriend, please. Yeah, okay, you must show us. <laughs> we must teach <laughs> you the stamp of approval first. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, my last question for you here okay. is. Uh, what do you wish that others could understand uh, about your experience? Hmm. Like your, maybe your friends or lecturers or whatever. Well, I think definitely I hope that um, the people in general will be able to understand the condition hearing loss. Because um, it's very funny because uh, even though we have, I mean hearing loss is a general medical term but you know there are many different people that have um, different needs you know some may prefer to hear some may prefer to speak mm -hmm. some may prefer to sign language mm -hmm. but um, I think it would be nice if the people try to understand us first understand what we what's the mode of communication that we prefer yes you know and patience as well mm -hmm. because they have to understand that even me myself I hear a lot from people saying that I speak quite well they say that I'm quite normal for a person with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I'm happy, okay, thank you so much. But still, um, hearing loss is something that, I mean, the cochlear implants is not a cure for hearing loss. So even though I can hear well, just like any other people, I do still have problems in school. So I may sometimes get lost in mm -hmm. classes, you know, when people speak very fast. Yes. Especially when you talk so soft and then you wear a mask. Yeah, well. yeah. So, so naturally, we all have our difficulties. So true, true. basically, just need to be patient and understanding mm. that you are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's all I have. Okay. So. Ah, that's all you have. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I was smiling the whole time that <laughs> I was just listening here beside you. So it's it's really a lovely sight watching both of you share how you know about the positive impact that you have with each other. So it's also really nice to hear about your experiences and insights on different perspectives uh, on Vanessa's hearing journey. So now let's see what the audience has to say. Let me just see our comments and questions. So yeah, I have here some, some comments, you know, such a fun duo to watch, that sisterly connection. <laughs> Amazing to hear the two of you and all the sibling banter. So yeah, yeah I guess very close to our uh, <laughs> audience are really having fun. More power to you girls. <laughs> now for some questions, uh, I have a question here from Emily. Okay. How long after the surgery did you notice your improvement in your ability to hear? Sorry, can you repeat the question again? Yeah. Um, 
how long after the surgery did you notice that oh, actually you, know, you can hear yes. the benefits of it? Correct. Uh, well, that's Emily, right? Emily. Emily, yeah. Okay, so Emily, um, from what I can remember, right, I had a cochlear implant surgery in February and then there's a one month recovery in order for your wound to heal before you are fixed up with the cochlear implant and um, I would say it took me about three months to be able to be fully adjusted to the cochlear implant. For me it's quite fast according to the audiologist because um, I'm already um, I've already uh, learned how to hear with my hearing aids, even though they are different, but um, I know how to speak, um, I know how to hear, even though not as well as the hearing people, but still is something. So my brain is already um, trained to be able to hear and speak, so that's why the recovery period for me is faster. But nevertheless, the, it depends on the patient, on how fast they can um, get used to the cochlear implant. So, yeah, so it depends, yeah. I passed the question to Rachel. Do you agree with her that it was around three months or yeah. could she hear the gossip earlier than that or <laughs> even or maybe longer? Yeah, it's about <laughs> approximately three yes. months. So around three, three months? Yeah, it was three months. May, yeah, yeah, around it, May. Correct, correct. Just nice before school starts. I recall it was quite fast. Like yeah, when yeah. you picked up, like yeah. uh, like I'm not trying to brag here, <laughs> but but I really, I honestly was quite impressed by yes. your the speed at which you recovered from your hearing, so mm -hmm. uh, from the from the surgery. So um, yeah, like she said, it's actually dependent on uh, yes. individuals. As as scientists, we can tell you, <laughs> there's a lot of variances you can expect. So not it's not a one size fit all thing. Yes, so, yes, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I. I so she may be fast. Some someone else might take a bit longer. It's yes, okay. It's, it's okay. okay. Yeah. It's yeah. just. It's just. Uh. You know. Just be patient. And everything. Yeah. Actually, sorry. I want to add a comment. Yeah. If you want to know, um, like, if you really want to know, like, how long it will take for you to get used to the cochlear implant, I advise that you should ask the healthcare professional. Mm. Because okay. this is something that I actually ask the doctor, in which they really know, because they know your condition. They will be able to predict around how long will it take. Okay. That's how I heard. Yeah, yeah, so such yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. as we know, every patient is different. So it's good to get the advice from your healthcare professional, yes. mm -hmm. um, so they can advise uh, appropriately. Mm -hmm. We also have a question here from Steve. Okay. So what are some of the challenges you face currently in your daily life as a young adult? Maybe in university or uh, in general. In general, uh, I think. Probably to fit myself with hearing people because it is all yes we have the same mode of communication but I feel like there's this kind of a line between us you know, like I'm still a girl with hearing loss so sometimes I feel like that's one of the major challenge I always face in school you know like sometimes I just it's very hard for me to integrate myself. Especially when people are not very open to, um, I mean, I, I totally understand uh, because they don't know how to approach people with hearing loss. But still, that's one of the challenge. So that is the reason why I get a cochlear implant, so that I'm able to fit myself on their level. But at the same time, um, they also make the effort. There are many nice people everywhere. They also make the effort to make sure that they are able to be on the same level as me. So it's more of the work between two parties. That's how we manage to overcome the challenge. So basically, um, even though these challenges are unavoidable, I think it's because of the people that are nice that uh, allows me to overcome all these challenges. Okay. Yeah. I think in general, um, the society is more understanding. To yeah, 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 yeah. So there are a lot of nice people there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, that's good to hear. We have a question also from Calvin. Um, did you know about cochlear implants when you were using hearing aids? So I'm thinking is that maybe when did you first hear about cochlear implants? Because you've been wearing hearing aids since you were two years old. Mm, yeah. I think I was first introduced to the idea of the cochlear implant at a very young age. I was in primary school, which is common actually because it's a special needs school. So I have many friends who were fitted with the cochlear implant. Mm. And I, I, even I was also very curious, like, oh, wow, they 
it's very interesting. Sometimes I will snatch the coconut from your toes. One cannot fit, but yours can stick on your head. So that's how I roughly know how the coconut implants work. Then also the funny thing is, why is it my hearing aids got the mold, but yours don't have the mold? You just hang on the ear. So uh, slowly afterwards, over time, as I mix around with those people, I started to do more research, and that's how I understand how it works. Mm. So um, it's a matter of um, uh, the people that I mix around with, mm. which is my friends. So that's how I got to know about the coconut implants. And, uh, and at least for you, you mentioned maybe your hearing loss progressed towards the later part. No? Yes. So before you really were benefiting from hearing aids. Yes, yes. Okay, I also have a question here from Charmaine. Do people ask you what you are wearing behind your ear? And how do you handle those situations? <laughs> Very good question. But um, I think I don't, I think I feel uh, quite a bit concerned about showing my cochlear implants to the audience. Not because I don't like people to see it, mm -hmm. but I'm a very um, protective of my uh, cochlear implants. I don't like it if the people if the people can see it. That means they will easily. I mean, you never know. They will snatch it away or something. And cochlear implants is a very expensive device, you know. So I'm very protective of it. So I don't think the people will see my device because I will hide it uh, uh, behind my hair. You will have your hair yeah, down. Yeah. There's a new function like the console, for example, mm -hmm. uh, on the head ah, yes. behind the ear or something. Yeah. But, Discreet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, I don't always show the people my device. Mm -hmm. I just hide it behind my head. Okay. But it's your choice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have a question here from Sam. Um, can you listen to music? Okay, I think you mentioned earlier, but of maybe you can explain. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. And what's your favorite music that you listen to now? Rock music. Yeah. <laughs> With the influence but of radio. You also listen to the weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the weekend. Radio shows. Yeah, yeah radio songs, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's been turning on the radio quite frequently now. It's like suddenly the radio just turns on. Like, yes, yes, I'm yes. like, hey, who on the radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also have a question here from Lydia. Uh, nice to hear your sharing. What are the challenges you face in school with everyone masked up now? Do you have any difficulties following conversations using a cochlear implant? Mm, actually, yes. If it's surprisingly. Um, despite the fact that you know, I hear people saying um, that uh, cochlear implants has given you so many benefits, right? But like what I've mentioned previously, it is not a cure for hearing loss. Even though it has made my life better, but still, it's not a cure for hearing loss. So therefore, I still experience challenges in school. And just recently, now um, in school, I always have this is one module where we have to do the group discussion. There were six of us. Wow, it was very challenging because, I mean, it's not because I cannot follow the conversation, but to make it worse, they, they were wearing a mask. So it's like, I can't even follow what we were trying to discuss, so that's one of the challenges I face. But I think it's not just me, myself, even my friend who is normal, who's hearing, she also said that she couldn't follow as well, so it's normal. Yeah, so um, I still do experience this challenge in school. So even the professors, the lecturers, like what she mentioned, the essence is very thick and then you wear a mask as well, so yeah. sometimes I can't catch up with what they say. So that is why assistive devices is very crucial. It's supposed to make learning easier for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, maybe this one was for both of you, but I'll ask uh, Rachel first. Okay. By switching from hearing aids to cochlear implants, how much has this helped to improve the quality of life? Maybe from your perspective, yeah. what do you think? How much is improved? Um, oh, okay, we mentioned. Or maybe for you also. <laughs> yeah, we, we, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, she, you know, we are able to talk more uh, a lot about a lot of things, mm. and I, I'm very happy to be able to hear your opinions and everything. Uh, so, uh, and then the thing is with your cochlear implants, I, I think I worry less when you're in school, so in general so like okay uh, you should be able to hear your professors yes. especially with your uh, other devices, yeah, yeah, Roger yes, Penn yes, and yes. everything so right. um, not to worry anymore mm -hmm. so yeah especially since you know you're gonna leave school and then mm -hmm. like, you're gonna be alone then <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so <laughs> but and then um, I also think that yeah, you can make friends more yeah. so it yes. really eases the, the worry for me yeah, yes, that's yes. just a very important thing so less stressful for me also <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about for you? Uh, 
terms uh, of quality of life. I think definitely it has improved tremendously for me. Because um, like what the audiologist mentioned, I used to rely a lot on lip reading. But I think now it's, it's very useful because especially when everybody's wearing a mask. But I'm somehow still able to get on with life. You know, I can still communicate with people with masks. So I would say the cochlear implant has um, improved my life greatly. I have a question here from Gladys. What are your post-surgery follow-up sessions like? How often and what, what did they do? Mm, very good question. So uh, post-surgery, uh, after the surgery, you will have to wait for one month in order for your wound to heal, which makes sense, right? Because if your wound is not healing well, yes. there will be risk of infection. Yes. So you don't want that, especially when the cochlear implants is very near to the brain, mm -hmm. so you don't want that. So there will be a one month recovery period after the surgery, and then the hospital will, I mean, it may be longer as well, depending yeah. on how fast the people recover. Yes. And then afterwards, they will ask you to go back to the hospital. I think they will ask the doctor to check your wound to see that it's healing well, in which they will remove the stitches. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, um, they will ask you to go back. I think a few weeks later, you can see your therapist, audio verbal th uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the purpose of this therapy is to um, train your brain to get used to the new sounds generated by the cochlear implant and then there's also mapping as well um, in which mapping is different in the sense that they will program your cochlear implant to meet the hearing needs because different people have different hearing needs you know like say for example some person may prefer to hear only the person next to me but I prefer it when I can hear everyone else because I'm a very uh, I want to be included in the whole conversation so I prefer it to hear every um, everything else. So that's what I tell my um, audiologist. So that's why mapping is very useful because you need to keep um, programming your cochlear implants. But for the frequency, uh, if I can recall right, I think uh, once every week, weekly basis, like one week, and then the next week, and then slowly you will start to space out even more from over a few weeks, and then over um, every month, and then yearly basis. So it will start to stretch out depending on how well you're adjusting to the coffee implant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a rough idea. Okay. Yeah, good, good perspective for, uh, for our audience. Another one from Gladys. Any intentional listening practice that you do at your own home to find useful? Intentional listening. Mm -hmm. Do you practice with her? Well, I think when, when, when you first got, when she first got her uh, cochlear implants, there were this you know, there's some, uh, there's this paper and then a lot of um, vowels, R and E, yeah, 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 but I mean, you don't really need it now, it's quite, yeah, but that's part of the, yeah, 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 we have to do it, yeah, yes. So with this, one. like as siblings, we just do it together. We take turns and like test with her. Yes, yes, yes. And then we just hide the paper and then we're like, oh, we see whether uh, you're really listening or not. Yeah. yeah. And I think radio is a very good, um, oh, yeah. it's a very good uh, way for you to practice your listening skills as well. In which, I, I understand, I think to some people, they, when they hear the word radio, they'll be like, oh, scared. Mm. Because DJs, they speak very fast, you know. Yes, yes. But, yeah, DJs. Um, I remember when the, when the therapist say try listening to the radio, so I was like, wow, too serious. <laughs> it's so fast, how? Impossible. Yeah. But if you're worried that it's too fast for you, then you can switch to television. This is what I always tell my friends, because you can use television or YouTube, say for example, TED or TED Talk. Mm -hmm. you, you try to listen and you read the English subtitles. Or maybe, uh, how about this, you listen without the subtitles first, and you see whether you get a rough idea. To see whether you're following the talk, then you switch on the English subtitles. So that's how you can practice your um, intent listening skills. And then maybe on a more advanced level, you can switch to the radio. So yeah. Such very good tips, which I hope our audience <laughs> would uh, find very useful. Our last question for the session okay. is from Sam. How, how, ha yeah, how has cochlear implant changed your life? For the better. Like we really explained, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's changed a lot, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, uh, it definitely improved your, your life yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the, another good thing about the cochlear implant, right, I think I find myself relying less heavily on the assistive devices. 
it's very fun. I was very surprised as well because in the past hearing aids, like every classes uh, I, I attended, I had to use the Roger Pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's pretty much flexible. Mm. It's like the, as long as the, the classroom is small and you know, the, the speaker is speaking loudly enough, uh, I'm fine. I think the cochlear implants is already doing its job fully. There's no need for the Roger Pen. And for example, there was this elective, there's this seminar talk. Ah, yes. It's not, it's quite big, I would say, about this room, the size of the room, and the speaker was right in front. I'm not even sitting in the first room, mm. like a few rows back, mm. and I'm still able to understand what you were talking about. Mm. That's the first for me. So, that's why, that's how it has changed my life a lot, without having to rely too much on assistive devices. Okay. I mentioned that was the last question, but there's another follow-up. <laughs> last, last. Okay. Oh, this is really the last okay. question now. <laughs> From Ali, are you concerned about the idea of wearing a cochlear implant for the rest of your life? Mm, I, am, I think not very much concerned. I mean, uh, as long as I'm able to hear, able to communicate with my family, catch up in school, I mean, why not? I'm okay with it. But I do uh, have doubts about being fitted with the cochlear implant for life. Because, uh, you know, anything can happen, you know, there are, there are accidents, especially when you just knock your head. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, so that's why I'm very worried every day. So I'm always very cautious with the way I move, but of course not overly cautious. Uh. Mm. And I remember my friend mentioned this question to me. He asked me, hey Vanessa, I heard that when a person with a cochlear implant dies, is it true that they have to remove the implant before he or she is incinerated? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure maybe you have to ask. Mm. Or maybe I'll go, go in later when the time <laughs> comes near. So, But yeah, there's, there are a few um, concerns. Lah, but basically, the bottom line is the reason why I get a cochlear implant is to hear, mm. to get um, in touch with them. I mean, I think that's all that matters. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I guess yeah, hearing from, from all, the, all the sharing, mm. I feel like would you say the cochlear implant does outweigh all the, you know, the benefits do outweigh all the, yes. you know, the, yeah. the, the concerns the and the risks? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I would like to thank all, you know, Rachel and Vanessa for really answering all our audience's questions. And we'd like to thank the audience for um, um, yeah, sending in your questions to make this session very interactive. So, before we end, it's time to announce our lucky draw. So, maybe any drum roll here? <laughs> Our winner that was randomly selected is Moon Kyo. So we will be in touch with you on how you can claim your prize. So Yay. congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. Well, before we close, I would just like to ask each of you if you have some final message for each other before we end the live chat session. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I don't say this much uh, because I'm not very touchy-feely, mushy kind of person. <laughs> but I want to say that I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you. Uh, about how far you've come, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, like uh, all your achievements or your awards. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. So you've done very well, mm -hmm. and just want to remind you that if you have any um, problems, if you cannot hear people when they speak. Don't be afraid to ask. Okay. Don't be afraid to ask them to repeat themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong. You're not committing a crime here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I have to say for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, of course, I'm really very thankful towards you because um, uh, even though I, I think for me personally, I feel that my world and your world is somehow different, and I don't know how the hearing world functions. So um, I really, I'm really very thankful for. For you telling me how to be able to better fit myself to their world. Uh, like, say, for example, you know that I very like to pretend to understand, in which I actually don't understand, yeah. like what yeah. you say, don't be afraid to ask. Mm. And also, um, I love how you always encourage me to learn to speak up. I think the reason why I'm speaking well, according to some people, is because of her. I mean, she was <laughs> always correcting the way I speak. And she's making sure that I will pronounce the word correctly. <laughs> so, wow, stress. But, yeah, I, I mean, because of her, that's how I'm still able to sound like a normal person. So, really, thank you so much for... Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, thanks for yeah. such a uh, touching uh, message for each one. <laughs> but, Vanessa, I have one more question to ask. Or maybe, what's your message to our audience out there who 
you know, who have hearing loss and you know, are thinking about their options? Okay, so um, hearing loss, whether hearing aids or cochlear implants, I want you to know that um, you're not alone, that's one. Because in the past when I suffered from hearing loss, I thought that I'm the only one. But really, you're not alone. There are many people out there who are willing to help you, provide you with advice. Um, there are many nice doctors, um, specialists, um, even therapists, they are willing to help you. And um, most importantly is um, don't um, be quick to jump into this um, solution. Like for example, you don't jump into the cochlear implants first. Try to explore other options. You try, say for example, the more powerful hearing aids. If it doesn't work for you, then you can go on to the cochlear implants. And uh, most importantly, I think I always get this misconception among my friends is that the cochlear implants will allow you to be able to hear. Just like mm. this. But it's actually, it's not true. It's not how it functions, especially when you see on YouTube people when they activate the cochlear implant. Like, wow, I can hear everything. But actually, that's not how it works. In fact, it requires um, many, many um, months or maybe even years of practice, patience, perseverance. Don't give up because I can totally understand. I mean, I'm a human user myself. The cochlear implants may not sound very pleasant. I understand. Even I also um, start to regret, am I doing the right decision? Am I doing the right thing? But yeah, basically you just don't give up and just keep on pushing yourself until the, the audiologists say that you're doing well of the cochlear implants. So just don't give up and always remember that the cochlear implants is not always a cure for hearing loss. But it will definitely um, improve your life a lot. So yeah, just remember this. Yeah. Okay, so I guess yeah, uh, as long as yeah, your, your professional mentioned that you are a suitable candidate, mm -hmm. you are motivated, you yes. have the family support, then yeah, you yes. can have a promising uh, hearing journey. Yes. Um, so again, just to close off, yeah, I find that you know, hearing loss is only a handicap if you don't do anything about it. So. With healthy hearing, you can stay more connected, and you know, with your family and with the people you love. So, just to close, uh, you know, stay tuned with our Cochlear Southeast Asia Facebook page um, to know when the next uh, live chat session will be. And then, as you know, this session is recorded, so do stay tuned on when we can um, place the recording with closed captions on our Facebook page. So with that, you know, hope to see you all for our next session and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.